Hey guys, Miss Marcus here, and as you can see, we're back playing some Master League with Atletico Madrid. And in today's episode, we have three matches for you from, I think they're all from the League of BBVA, this match, which is always good to see, sort of. So with those three matches, I'm going to give a guess that's going to be 17, 18, and 19 in the league. So it means in the next episode, we will, I think we'll be going into January transfer window, but I'm not going to show you who I'm going to buy. I'll just, you'll just end up seeing the players end up just appearing in the team, which will make more sense than like trying to go through and show basically oh i bought this player and i played this much for him because there's no real point really showing that it's not really uh worthwhile that's the word i'm thinking of but as we see here in the first match of this episode we're going up against valencia with their ridiculous bat symbol they're so cool having a bat symbol on their socks and like a bat symbol on their shirt it's just crazy should, should have played with valencia but <laughs> anyway Anyway, in the 28th minute of the match, they basically get they got a throw in down this well, down their left hand side, well down their right hand side, gives it basically straight to me. And Andrew Pierre Zizniak pops in, basically pops it in from about 20 odd yards out with a finesse shot to give us a 1 0 lead at the Mestalla. And basically, this game we had a lot of players who were sort of not in form and sort of stuff like that. But like I said in the last episode, in the last match against uh, Udi Las Pamas, I'm gonna try and like find out what my best squad is so then I can sort of find out who I actually have to end up buying for the final for the uh, January transfer window to go into the last bit of the season so of course that was always good to see so in the 49th minute of the match we actually get end up getting a, a corner kick which was a bit ridiculous considering how long it took for the for the, the first half to end but Arda Turan ends it with a, like a really crazy shot in the last seconds of the match as you see there we sort of had three shots one on target going into the half time and going all up to the last minutes of the match Griezmann has a shot in the last second of the match nothing comes from the resulting corner kick he ends up clearing it. I mean, it says a lot when only one minute was added on in the second half. And as we see from the stats coming up in a, a second, the game sort of didn't really go anywhere. They had one shot in the second half. We had three shots in the second half, two of which were on target, I think. So, sort of makes sense there. It's going into the second match of this episode. It is against Athletic Bilbao. And we're sort of playing, again, one of our stronger teams. Because, of course, we know that we've not got any other games to play, like, every once in a week. Every, every week we play our Liga BBVA matches of course this time we're from the, we're at the Vicente Calderon so we're always going to play at home and basically try and play our best football at home try and win the game quite comfortably because of course you want to impress the home fans but when I was playing with Athletic well when I was playing against Athletic Bilbao, uh, Athletic Bilbao I saw Ika Munayin and I completely forgot about him existing to be honest because I, I just was like I really need a right wing forward and I was like Ika Munayin, why did I not buy him before? Because he's a ridiculously good player. I mean, Churchy has been like amazing for me, but it would be quite good to actually have someone like Munayin. In the 12th minute of the match, I scored the most ridiculous goal ever with Andrey Pierzhizhniak after he hits the crossbar. There's this crazy defending from defenders for Athletic Bilbao, and then he just comes up and pops it in himself. Like, it was the most ridiculous goal I've ever scored, but going into the halftime, uh, Raul Garcia has a shot away. And I try and really get, get another shot away, but Arda Turan this time comes in with a flying thunderbolt of a strike from the edge of the box to give us a 2-0 lead going into the half time. An absolutely amazing goal, because look how fast, did you see how fast the ball went into the back of the net? It's just absolutely amazing. But as you see there, 2-0 at half time, pretty decent against Athletic Bilbao at the Vicente Calderon. And it's sort of expected of, of us to sort of win against the more or less the lower league sides. Oh, they're not really a lower league side, but like a poor enough sort of side to be honest. So... Yeah, in this in the seventy fifth minute of the match, Arkoki that does a little bit of skill on the ball doesn't really go anywhere. Eventually, it gets crossed in from Gamez and big beast that is Antoine Griezmann of all people jumps up to head it into the back of the net to give us a three 0 lead going into the last minutes of the match. And then into the last minutes of the match, literally Andre Pjanic on the ball just sort of running past Itaraspe trying to get the ball to Griezmann again doesn't really come to anything. Demarcos's clearance goes straight to Koke doesn't come to anything, and then Gamez picks it up, volleys it basically well. I would have volleyed it into the back or volleyed it at goal if I had the opportunity, but I did not get the opportunity to do so. So with a 3 0 win, it was pretty decent, but they go into the first knockout round results of who we're actually going to end up getting. Shakhtar got Barcelona and stuff like that, Southampton were still in the league, and then we're sort of like, well, we get Pablo Weiston, whoever the hell they're meant to be, away from home in our first knockout round of the Champions League. So it was always good to see as well. So going into the last match of this episode, it is against Cordoba, and we're going up against um, Nathan Gillis, or Gilas, or it's Gilas. But it's not Nathan, it's definitely not Nathan. But at the Nuevo Arcangel, we're facing a team which aren't really that good, but they ridiculously, they don't destroy me, but my god, they were they were actually really hard opponents, which was quite interesting to see. And Jan Oblak actually had the opportunity to go up in terms of his overall rating, 
but when a goalkeeper gets it, it's the most ridiculous thing in the world because goalies just aren't really that good on Superstar, regardless of if you have the best goalie in the world, you're still going to concede goals against the computer. So it was a bit ridiculous of me getting that opportunity, really. So going up into this particular game, not really much actually happened in this game until the 45th minute of the match, where Zizniak gets a shot away, and then it basically the keeper makes a pretty decent save, and then they clear it, and then that was the halftime result. So the halftime result was 0-0 against Corda, but as you see there, we had five shots, two on target. They had zero shots, zero on target. But in the 51st minute of the match here, they end up getting an opportunity, end up popping in the back of the net, and then Gilas gets another opportunity in the 77th minute of the match, where he gets a shot away. All Black makes a pretty decent save, but it doesn't come to anything. And then in the last minutes of the match, Gilas on the ball plays an absolutely amazing ball down the right-hand side to uh, Garcia. All Black comes running out, actually gets the ball, but for some reason the referee gives a, gives a free kick and a yellow card. And then from the resulting free kick, they actually pop it in the back of the net. Uh, Rossi ends up scoring for Cordoba. To give them a 2-0 win against us, which was ridiculous considering that they're not one of the better teams in the league and losing against them is quite poor considering that they're, well, we're sort of trying to fight for the league here. But in the second half, they did have six shots, three on target, so maybe they did deserve to win. So you have to sort of go for that sort of logic. But as we see here, Barcelona is still top of the table and they're 11 points clear of us. So in the next episode, it's the January transfer window, so it's always good to see that. So if you have enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for more and catch you later.